Normal strength training involves both lifting and lowering weights, but there are also types of strength training that involve just lifting a weight or just lowering a weight. When we just lift a weight, that usually involves dropping the weight between reps, um, and when we just lower a weight, that normally involves other people or a machine bringing the weight back to the starting position so that we can lower it again for the next rep. When we lift a weight, the muscle fibers shorten, and this is called a concentric muscle action. When we lower a weight, the muscle fibers lengthen, and this is called an eccentric muscle action. Therefore, the type of strength training that only involves lifting weights and not lowering them is usually called concentric only strength training. And the type of strength training that involves only lowering weights and not lifting them is usually called eccentric only strength training. Now the interesting thing is that these two different types of strength training produce very different adaptions inside the central nervous system and also inside the muscles. When we lift a weight, the muscles produce force because the muscle fibers inside them are forming actin myosin cross bridges. This is called active force production and it's triggered by the signal sent from the central nervous system to the muscles. When we lower weight, force comes from two totally different places because the muscle fibers are being stretched at the same time as they are actually trying to contract. So we have the active force production that's produced by the actin myosin cross bridges forming but we also have the resistance to being stretched that comes from collagen inside the muscle and from molecules like titin inside the muscle fibres. And this is why when we lower a weight we're actually able to produce a lot more force than when we lift a weight. Another way of saying that is that we are stronger eccentrically than we are concentrically. When we test our lifting strength, our concentric only strength, there are two ways of doing it. We can either lift increasingly heavy weights until we reach one that we can't lift anymore and the previous one becomes our one repetition maximum. Or we can set a machine to fix the speed of movement and then we can try and produce as much force as possible at that speed. And both of these are perfectly acceptable ways of measuring strength while muscle fibers are shortening. Now, when we want to test our lowering strength, it's actually a lot harder to increase weights until the point when we can't lower a weight anymore because obviously weights lower themselves without our help. So generally speaking, the accepted way of measuring our eccentric only strength, our, our lowering strength, is to set a period of time for which we have to be lowering the weight, say three or four seconds, and then we attempt to lower the heaviest weight possible or exert the highest force possible during that speed of movement or that duration of movement. We can use these two different strength tests to assess the effects of strength training programs which only involve lifting phases and strength training programs that only involve lowering phases. And what we find is that they both produce quite different results. After strength training programs that only involve lifting and don't involve any lowering at all, then what we tend to find is that our lifting strength increases proportionally to our lowering strength. So our ratio of lifting to lowering strength gets larger. And what we tend to find after a period of time in which we only do lowering exercises is the opposite happens. Um, we tend to find that our lowering strength, our ability to produce force in the lowering phase of a movement, increases proportionally greater than our strength in the lifting phase. And so the ratio of our uh, lowering strength to our lifting strength gets bigger. The greater increases in lowering strength after a training program that just involves the lowering part of a movement, and the greater increase in lifting strength after a training program that just involves the lifting part of a movement, are both examples of the principle of specificity. Now the principle of specificity states that our strength gains are greater when the test is similar to the exercise used in training. When comparing lifting and lowering strength training, the principle of specificity happens because lifting strength training causes one set of adaptions and lowering strength training causes a different set of adaptions and those different sets of adaptions lead to the ability to produce force uh, to a greater extent in either lifting or lowering. 
After lowering strength training, there are five adaptions that happen that either don't happen at all after lifting strength training or happen to a lesser extent. And these adaptions are what help us produce greater force while muscle fibers are lengthening uh, during lowering um, strength training exercises. And three of these adaptions are inside the central nervous system and two are inside the muscle itself. The three adaptions inside the central nervous system are an improvement in coordination in the lowering movement, a reduction in spinal inhibition, and an increase in motor unit recruitment. After lowering strength training, coordination improves quite quickly. And this is because the lowering movement is quite complex as far as the brain is concerned. And typically we're quite unused to performing lowering muscle actions with high forces. So there's this rapid improvement in coordination as the brain becomes accustomed to what it has to deal with. Similarly, there's a reduction in spinal inhibition after a strength training program involving lowering movements because initially the spinal uh, reflex is involved to prevent high forces from occurring. As um, the body becomes more accustomed to producing those high forces while muscle fibers are lengthening, then that spinal inhibition reduces and so we're able to produce more force. And thirdly, motor unit recruitment Motor unit recruitment increases after any type of strength training where very high forces are involved. And since lowering movements can involve extremely high forces, this allows us to increase motor unit recruitment more rapidly than if we were producing lower forces, such as during um, lifting strength training. In addition to these adaptions inside the central nervous system, there are also adaptions inside the muscle. Now, after uh, a strength training workout involving just lowering movements, we often see quite a lot of damage. And some of the structures that are damaged include the collagen layers around the muscle fibers and also the titan inside the muscle fibers themselves. And these structures are both quite important for producing the passive forces that assist our ability to produce force during a lowering movement. And it's quite likely that these structures are reinforced after being damaged and grow stronger and therefore contribute to a greater extent in future workouts involving lowering movements. So it's quite possible that increases in both collagen and titan contribute to increased force production during lowering movements after lowering strength training programs. After a strength training program that just involves lifting weights, we improve our lifting strength more than our lowering strength. Now, this probably happens mainly because of the lack of adaptions that support improvements in lowering strength. So we don't get the improvement in coordination in the lowering phase. We don't get the reduction in spinal inhibition in the lowering phase. And we don't get that um, additional increase in motor unit recruitment that comes with producing extremely high forces um, multiple times. Um, similarly, we don't get the changes inside the muscles, so we don't get the additional collagen and titan content. But there are also two potential explanations that don't involve the lack of adaptions from lowering strength training, but actually involve specific changes that occur only after lifting strength training. When we lift a weight, this involves a higher level of rate coding, or the rate of signals from the central nervous system to the muscle, than when we lower a weight. And this is probably because the rate of detachment of actin myosin cross bridges is faster when muscle fibers are shortening than when they're lengthening in, in most cases. So it's possible that after a period of time in which we just lift weights, our ability to send those signals to the muscle at a faster rate increases. So our rate coding may increase to a greater extent after a lifting strength training program and after a lowering strength training program and that may benefit our ability to produce force while lifting weight to a greater extent than when lowering weight. Uh, another factor that could relate to this uh, difference in um, strength gains between lifting and, and lowering um, strength tests is the change in pination angle of the muscle fibers. So after a strength training program that just involves lifting uh, weight we tend to increase pination angle to a greater extent than after a strength training program that only involves lowering weights. 
Now, pination angle um, generally is, is thought to allow more muscle fibers to pack inside a muscle, but actually um, its main role is to enhance the effect of architectural gearing. So architectural gearing allows muscle fibers to rotate inside a muscle while they are either shortening or lengthening. And this benefits um, uh, muscles because um, the greater the uh, rotation, the slower the muscle fiber has to contract for the same muscle shortening speed. So what it does is it disassociates muscle shortening from fiber shortening. So when architectural gearing is very high, muscle fibers um, don't shorten as much as muscles. And this means they shorten slower than muscles. So when we're trying to produce force while lifting, the main factor that determines how much force we can produce is the force velocity relationship. So the higher the gearing, the better um, the situation because the more force we can produce. So it's possible that that increase in pination angle during um, lifting strength training programs is beneficial for force production specifically during um, a lifting test of strength because it shifts um, the force velocity relationship such that the muscle fibers um, shorten more slowly for the same muscle shortening speed. Architectural gearing is also important during lowering strength training but for a different reason. When architectural gearing is high this means that the muscle fiber lengthens less for the same amount of muscle lengthening and since muscle fiber lengthening is closely associated with the amount of damage that results from strength training then a higher level of architectural gearing means that the muscle suffers less damage which is a good thing. However architectural gearing doesn't really affect how much force muscles produce while the fibers are lengthening because the force velocity relationship of muscle fibers while they're lengthening is very flat. So um, when we increase pination angle which improves our ability to perform architectural gearing this doesn't really assist our ability to produce force while muscle fibers are lengthening because architectural gearing doesn't affect how much force we can produce while muscle fibers are lengthening. In summary our lowering strength improves to a greater extent than our lifting strength after lowering strength training or eccentric training and our lifting strength increases to a greater extent than our lowering strength after lifting strength training or concentric only strength training. And these different results happen because of specific adaptions that are triggered by either the lowering uh, movements or the lifting movements.